Well, hi again, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me this time for the last time for a while. Things have just been getting a little bit out of hand for me, I'm afraid, with sort of building projects, not only around my house, but also in my daughter's and son's houses, with them uh, sort of undergoing some renovations and repair work, and with them working full time, I'm sort of going to give a little bit of my time to them. Also want to focus on my uh, general stock market commentary once a week, uh, which comes up on a Sunday morning, and then also for some more extended commentary to those uh, who have continued to subscribe to my Patreon page, and thank you to all of those. If you're watching this thoroughbred-type content, if you happen to be one of my patrons, I do appreciate the support you're showing there. Uh, but again, just reiterating that I can't give any commentary on any individual stocks or anything that's going on in my portfolio, but just looking more at just general trends in the market uh, currently and historically. And then moving on, and I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video, uh, looking at harness racing. And so the decision to uh, sort of just hold fire on the wagon wheel for a while is really based around one of uh, the sort of the key principles I try to live by uh, don't always succeed, but you know, the rule basically is if you're doing something and it's not working, then stop doing it. And if you have a look at the results for the wagon, certainly in 2022, it's just all been negative. Uh, last weekend, there were eight races that didn't find the winner of any of them in the quaddy legs in Melbourne and Sydney. Uh, I ended up with six bets. Two of them, the prices were a bit too short to get on board. Uh, but the six that uh, we placed money on, or I placed money on, all lost. Uh, Sacred Palace ran quite nicely for a third. And Think and Fly led for quite a while. But uh, the rest of them, uh, not really looking like getting into the money. And so we're almost down $300 now on our bank of 1000 uh, return on investment over the time, minus 11.7% on nearly $2,500 worth of investment. Um, on that course, on that rotating basis as you keep rolling the money over. But, uh, you know, that's just not good enough. And there's no signs really uh, that it's delivering the goods. And so I'm sort of packing up the shop on this for the moment. Uh, might have a look at it again when we come back into the spring carnival and we get into the better class of races with those quality horses. But right now, having a rest. So let's have a look at uh, one race tomorrow. I've had a look through both Melbourne and Sydney and uh, I've gone for a race where there are pretty reasonable quality horses and the field is not too large. And so we're talking about Rose Hill Race 7. It's over 1,800 metres. It's a benchmark 94, so not the best of horses, but, you know, not too bad. In fact, for uh, the ramrod strategy, which I discussed, it was a, uh, a technique, if you like, or an analysis process developed by practical punting uh, in which you sort of only look at the top two favourites. In this case, it's Surf Dancer and Arapaho, and then also horses with tab numbers one and two. Now, number two, Scratch. So I've only got three horses to look at here. Uh, the engine for driving this uh, calculation all over here, a lot of VLOOKUP statements. Uh, there we are, some VLOOKUP statements coming over here to tables and helping us work it out, whatever the case. I'm going to upload this to Google Sheets and you can have it as a template uh, to use if you like the idea of the strategy. Uh, but it does come up with the favourite to win the race, Arapaho total of 122 points from Surf Dance at the second favourite. And then number one uh, is the third of the three uh, under consideration. If we come along to the revised wagon wheel, the one that I've been working on more recently, where it gives uh, positive weightings to the higher tab number horses. Um, in this particular case, uh, the top selection is Major Arty, uh, standing out a little bit six points ahead of Miran, and the others don't come in as uh, getting into the ratings. And if we go back to the original wagon wheel, where benefit is given to horses carrying lower weights and considering higher weights to be a disadvantage, again, it comes up with major arty. In fact, it's got it standing out quite a long way from the rest of the field. So there you are, that one race tomorrow, Rose Hill Race 7. 
well, it's today now, actually, by the time this gets uploaded. Uh, so I'm going to be having a little bit of a bet on Majorati, and that's going to be the only bet that I'll be having for the day. We'll see how that one goes. All of these, Ramrod, Revised Wagon Wheel, and Optimized Wagon Wheel, this entire spreadsheet with the with the three tabs here will be uploaded to Google Sheets and you can download that to your desktop. And then as a number of my viewers have done, tinker around with some of the ratings, with some of the uh, balances, leaving some things out, uh, whatever you like, just uh, use it at uh, your own leisure. Hope that it's helping you, um, but it's certainly at the moment not delivering the results that I'm looking for, as I have said a couple of times already. But moving on, I've decided to have a look at Globe Derby Harness Racing. Now, you know, the pools in the TAB markets are not very high for this. So you're not going to be able to sort of get a lot of money on. Not really sure what goes on over on Betfair. Uh, but I'm looking for positive expectancy. And I was just reflecting back 30 years ago uh, when I was attempting to um, be a bit more serious about betting. Um, and for a year there, did a lot of research and found that the leaders at Gawler, which is my local harness racing track, they won about half of all of the races and about 40% of the races at Globe Derby were also won by the leaders. So it really was a matter of just collecting data by, look, by looking at lots and lots of videos and getting in a feeling for which horses had higher gate speeds than others and uh, we did okay. My brother and I sort of spent quite a while doing this, and we did well. Um, but I was just too conservative in my betting, wasn't really prepared to put on like lots and lots of money. Uh, and so, we, you know, we won some money, but uh, at the end of the day, it was more a hobby and a bit of fun, which I guess is the way I think we should all treat our, our gambling. Uh, don't really think it's... Uh, would be nice, I suppose, to be able to uh, make a living from it, but gee whiz, it's a pretty hard task. Anyway, look, rambling on a bit here, uh, just thinking about that, and I thought, well, I wonder what the situation is currently. So I went to the South Australian Harness Racing site and found that there was enough data there for me to find the uh, leaders of the last 58 races at Globe Derby Park. 25 of the leaders had won. The average starting price was $2.93. And so that gives you a return on investment of 26%. So there is a positive expectancy there. Right now, the wagon wheel is having a negative expectancy. And why would you want to continue on pursuing something that uh, does not give a positive return? Uh, in this particular case at Gobe Derby, Quite a number of the horses there were short price favourites. And in fact, if you decided not to bet on odds on horses, the return on investment goes up to about 34%. Uh, the number of races drops down to a 44. Uh, and when you do the calculation, you get a slightly better return. But there is a positive expectancy, as I said. And so therefore, I'm going to just, when I get a little bit of spare time, there won't be a lot of it. Uh, it's going to put my time into that. And if at some stage I come up with some awesomely good news for you, I'll bring it to you. Uh, but until then, it's happy punting to you all. I do hope you have found uh, the content from the wagon wheel and whatever I've been delivering to you uh, on a more or less weekly basis has been useful, interesting, informative, entertaining, whatever you like. And we'll have a look at what the wagon does when we get up around the Caulfield Melbourne Cup time. But until then, I do hope you keep very well and that your stock market investing is going well. And if you happen to be having a punt, that you're finding a winner or two there also.